Well, good day, Facebook. Minister Rice here. Just to touch bases with you. I pray all are doing well. My heart is heavy. My spirit is vexed. Um, what's going on in this world today? I'm just going to keep it keep it real because the ones of you know me and follow me on Facebook, you know I don't sugarcoat anything and I just keep it 100. Uh, it's a lot of injustice going on in this world today. And we seen what happened on the news. But thing is, what can we do and how can we do when justice is injustice? Persecution is everywhere. This man was just strangled to death on Monday. And my heart is just like, why are people just so evil? But the Bible teaches us that. The Bible teaches us you're going to be evil men long as we live. This man was beaten and choked. And then he died. Uh, many of you may not agree with what I'm, what I'm going to say today, but that's okay. Um, it's all right. Uh, many may disagree with me, but that's okay also. But the truth is the truth. Facts are facts. Reality is reality. Now, what I'm going to say doesn't apply to, to every man, but it is going to identify the, the ones that are doing wrong. There are some loving uh, white people. I have some, some, some wonderful white friends, some, some loving white friends. And also, <clears throat> I have some, some, some loving black friends. <laughs> and, and, and also, uh, too many black people don't, don't even like their own kind. They're black on black hate crimes. But the thing is, we are going to deal with the facts today. We are going to deal with what's going on today. Uh, many, many black people, many blacks uh, just been dogged out. It seems like to me they just cherry picking the black man. Just just plucking one off the tree one at a time. Just, just cherry picking. And also, if we notice, now these are facts. Majority of the time, when a white man get arrested, he is treated differently than a black man being arrested. Those just are the facts. I know a lot of people not going to agree with me. And I know a lot of people not going to agree with what I'm, what I'm saying. But facts are facts. This young man was shot down in Georgia. Just jogging through a neighborhood. Because the good old boys, yeah, I'm going to call them out. Them rednecks. Yes, they are want to shoot this black boy down just jogging through the neighborhood. Now, if you don't want to tune in with me today, you might well just, just, just go ahead and, and just get off my page. There are corrupt politicians. There are cor corrupt people in this government getting, getting away with all kinds of crimes. But no, but 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 they but people don't want to throw them throw them in jail. They the people don't want to throw them in jail. Corrupt politicians, corrupt government officials, done done all sorts of wrongness, and they still walking around free, and 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 folk want to choke this black man out, just choke him out while he begging for his life, just want to choke him out. My God, the Bible teaches us in Proverbs 24, verses 11 through 12, and Mark 10, 46 through 49, when good people do nothing. You might want to read that for yourself. And also, it teaches us 
in 1 Timothy 5 and 20. It said, them that sin rebuke before all, rebuke before all that others also may fear. Innocent killing, racism, persecution. See, there are a lot of no good folks hiding behind an officer's uniform. And they are the bad apples. Now, there are some good officers out there. There are some officers that protect and serve. But 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 there are some officers. They don't change the hood. Let the let the preacher make it very, very plain. They have change the hood to an officer suit. They have changed the hood to a business suit. And their hatred for the black man has spilled over. Perpetrating and being a fraud. My Lord, we also learn. Let's see what the Bible have to say about this. Yes, I'm upset. Well, preacher, why are you speaking like this? Because it is going on. It too many preachers and teachers running scared to tell the truth. It says, learn to do good. That's what the Bible teaches us. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Correct oppression. Bring justice to the fatherless and please the widow's cause. You can find that in Isaiah 1 and 17. Also, the Bible teaches us, he has told you, O oh man, what is good and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and walk humbly with God. That's in Micah 6 and 8. Yes. Yes, the Bible tell us to love. Yes, the Bible tell us to love. First, uh, first John uh, verses, uh, chapter 14, verses 9 through 21 teaches us. We love him because he first loved us. John 13, 34 teaches us. A new commandment. I give you that ye love one another as I have loved you that ye also love one another. Yes, the Bible is telling us that. Hebrew 12, 14 tell us, follow peace with all men. That's what the Bible said. Holiness without which no man shall see God. Yes, the Bible is telling us that also. Proverbs 19, 11, it teaches us the discretion of a man defers his anger and it is his glory to pass over transgression. The Bible teaches us this. But my God, Romans 12 and 8, tell us something else. Tell us something also. Romans 12 and 8 tell us something also. It says, if it be possible, why did God put the word possible in that scripture? It said, if it be possible, as much as life in you, live peacefully with all men. If it be possible. Because God knows it's going to be some low down, nasty, evil individuals in in this world. He said, if it possible. So what do you do when the possible become impossible? That's what I want to know. What do you do when the possible become impossible? The Bible teaches us. What does the Bible say about defending the oppressed? There are a lot of people oppressed today. Not only the black man. Every culture, every culture 
has its issues. Every culture. And I, I and I and I just want to I just want to make it perfectly clear. I don't hate nobody. But I do know right from wrong. I do know that much. I do know when a person is being dogged out. I do know when a person is being mistreated. I do know that much. But nobody want to talk about it. People want to want want to use the the metaphor of an ostrich. You want to stick your head in the sand and act like everything is going to go away. And I'm going to tell something to these pastors out here or any church leader. You need to protect your people. Yes, you need to protect your people because it's some evil, wicked people in the world. Before the coronavirus hit, people going into churches and shooting up folks, killing people at the church house. If you a pastor, you need to protect your people. And also all these church picnics, all these church gatherings, you need to have somebody ready to do some action to protect your people. So when something happens, everybody just won't be running like ants in an anthill when you stick a stick in it. People just scattering and, and running scared. Why people just picking your people all one by one, left and right. Common sense is, is hard to find. So my suggestion to any leader, if you have any social gathering after this coronavirus, my suggestion is you have somebody posted up ready to protect your people. Injustice going on. What do we say? What the Bible says about helping the oppressed? What the Bible says? Isaiah 58 10 says, and if you and if you spend yourself in behalf of the hungry and satisfy the need of the oppressed, then your light will rise in darkness, and your night will become the noonday. What the Bible says about advocating for others. There are so many black men. I'm just going to stick with the black man right now. I'm just going to stick with the black man. Uh, uh, I, I'm not going to jump track. To, I'm just talking about what's going on in this world today. What's going on? That black man being picked off one by one. <laughs> what the Bible says about advocating for others. Proverbs 31 verses 8 through 9 teaches us. Speak up. That's what the Bible says in the NIV version. Speak up for those who can't speak for themselves. That's what the word says. For the rights of all, all, black, yellow, green, blue, whatever color you are, for all, injustice and injustice for all people, or destitute. Proverbs 31, 8 through 9 teaches us in the NIV, speak up and judge fairly. Defend the rights of the poor and the needy. See, the thing is, it's a storm coming. Whether you like it or not, it's a storm coming. But the thing is, what you going to do about it? Are you going to run and hide? See, the thing is, by the grace of God, Brother Rice already prayed up. See, the thing is, meat don't mean weak. Let me say that again. Meat don't mean weak. What the Bible says about having a voice for the voiceless. It teaches us in Proverbs 31. Like I just said, we got to speak up for those who can't speak for themselves. My Lord, there's a lot going on in this world. 
Now, what does the Bible say about fighting for justice? See, the thing is, a lot of church folks, you need to read your Bible. You need to search the scripture and stand up for what is right. Ain't nothing wrong with you going to a prayer meeting. You go all the prayer meeting you want. But what you going to do when, when, when the devil come up in there and start blowing you away? Some of you just ain't getting it. Some of you just ain't getting it. Mm -mm. You, no, 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 you ain't getting it. What does the Bible say about fighting for justice? Learn to do good. <laughs> That's what it says. Seek justice. Correct oppression. Bring justice to the fatherless. I got to read that again. That's Isaiah 117. Now, here's a good one. Here's a good one now. What does the Bible teach us about bearing arms? So when the bullets start flying, what you gonna do? It's against my religion to carry a weapon. It's against my religion this, it's against my religion that. Well, you're gonna be one dead individual. Yeah. Yeah. You just might well just go ahead and fill out your toe tag and pick out your suit or pick out your dress. God gonna protect me. He says in his word right here what the Bible says about bearing arms. We see clearly in the passage like 1 Samuel 25 and 13. It said, and David said to his men, every man strap on his sword. Every man strap on his sword. The sword ain't, is, is, is not there just to uh, 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 be a showpiece. The sword is there to do some damage. The sword is there for protection. But now, but some of you all, some of you church folks, uh, you know, you don't, you don't want to deal with no weapons. When the Bible says every man strap on his sword. And every man of them strapped on his sword, David. The Bible said David also strapped on his sword. Well, some of you say, well, I'm preaching that the Old Testament. Well, I'm going to get to the New Testament in a minute. And the, and the word tells us, and about 400 men went up after David, while 200 remained with the baggage. That is the English Standard Version. So, each man had a sword ready to be uh, holstered and used when required. And in Psalm 144 and 1, it teaches us, it teaches us, Blessed be the Lord, my rock, who trained my hands for war and my fingers for battle. Besides instrument of warfare, weapon are used in the Bible for the purpose of self-defense. Nowhere in the scripture it is forbidden. It's time to work up. It's a storm coming. You're going to be running high, scared. Your family, that man, then those men who died could be your brother. It could be your father. But nobody want to talk about that. Everybody just want to go out and raise hell and, 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 and burn up stuff. But I'm going to tell I'm, I'm, the preacher going to tell you something. It is a difference in being in control and out of control. See, when you're out of control, you can't think properly. You can't strategize properly. No, this is not a threat. No, no. Brother Wright is not on Facebook making a threat. But I tell you one thing, Brother Wright going to keep it 100. Um, I, I, I will tell you that with this injustice. When all hell break loose, 
in America today, the government is going to wake up. When the black man get tired of being beat, killed, shot, hung, drugged behind vehicles, all the above, all hell going to get up, the preacher said it. See, that was wrong with some of your church folks and some of your folks out here. You don't want to speak the truth. Your ears too tender. Well, all this chaos going on. Oh, it's coming. And it's just going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. The preacher's going to ask you a question. Now, what you going to do about it? What you going to do about it? When this wickedness and this filth and the injustice of the hate folks and the rednecks and the, and the Ku Klux Klan and all them folks. Oh, it's coming. Some of you are going to be running scared. But Brother Rice ain't going to be running scared. What you bring to the table, that what you're going to get. I'm not making no threat. Oh, no. The preacher ain't making no threat. I'm not going looking for nothing. But if you bring it to my table, you're going to get everything you want. And some of you... Well, I'm going to leave Brother Rice alone. Good. I ain't got time for you anyway because you're going to get in the way. You will be a distraction. Well, I'm not going to give him a call for an appointment. You ain't calling me now and you don't call me later. See, that's too easy. I'm going to disassociate myself with Minister Rice. Good. Don't mind your business. You're just going to get in the way. Well, preacher, well, what you got to say about um, the Bible said you live by the sword, you die by the sword. And that's a good question. That is a very good question. The soldier sees Jesus at his arrest. Let me check this out. Check this out. The soldier see Jesus at his arrest and the Lord our God Jesus warned Peter in Matthew 26, 52 through 54. Cross-reference scripture, John 18, 11. Now this is what he told Peter. He just told Peter, Peter, Put away that sword. Put it away. Some say, well, preacher, you live by the sword, you're going to die by the sword. Okay. Jesus told Peter to put that sword away. But a whole lot of you missed this part right here. You need to pay attention real close. Real close. He said, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Okay. Now, some folk think Christians are pacifists, okay? While others understand it simply to mean, in general, uh, violence breeds more violence, okay? That's what the word says. But you need to pay attention to this part right here. Jesus told Peter to put his sword away. He did not tell Peter to throw his sword away. See, some of you missed that. Some of you missed that part. Let me say that again. Jesus told Peter to put his sword away. He didn't tell Peter to throw his sword away. Because, because in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, it's a time and place for all things. If Peter had a had a had a had a pull that sword, wasn't nothing is gonna interrupt. Jesus' mission to get to the cross. Nothing. And also, if 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 Peter had to pull that sword, that would have gave them an excuse to kill all of the doggone disciples. Mm -mm, put it away, Peter, but don't you throw it away. Peacemakers or pacifists. Peacemakers or Render in the English Standard Version. Render in the English Standard Version 
Jesus told Peter to put his sword back in its place. That place would be on his side. That for some of you uh, folks that don't want to protect your home. That for some of you pastors that don't want to protect your congregation. He didn't say throw it away. After all he had just ordered the, the, the disciples to arm themselves, Jesus ordered the disciples to arm themselves just before uh, they came to get him. So why did Jesus tell the disciples to arm themselves if he, if, if, if he didn't want us to be armed? My Lord. Then it says, Peter, this is, this is, this, I'm just paraphrasing. Peter, this ain't, this, this is not the right time for a fight. Mm-mm, mm-mm. But I tell you what, America, I tell you what, black people, it's time to wake up. It's time to wake up. Some of y'all got that little stimulus check out there. You thought it was Christmas. You thought it was Christmas. Yes, you did. I seen them right here in the in the, the state of Washington, down at the Walmart, buying TVs, buying clothes, buying gifts. Christmas in spring and summer. If you notice the news. If you notice the news during that same time frame, it was a spike in people buying weapons. Majority of the black folks, I can't speak for all black folks, they think it's Christmas. The racist group out there buying weapons and ammo. Tell me what's wrong with that picture. Black folks think it's Christmas. Racists and rednecks buying ammo. Mm-hmm. Preacher gonna call it just like it is. See, a lot of folks don't want to talk about that. Like I said, it's a wonderful, wonderful white people. I love them. But them bastards, them racist bastards. Yes, I'm gonna call them bastards. I'm not I'm not mad. I'm not yes, I'm angry. Yes, I'm angry. I am angry. Act like church folk can't get angry. You need to get angry. You need to wake up. See, a lot of these people out here, a lot of these people, a lot of these racist groups, a lot of these racist groups think that black men don't have no backbone. There's a whole lot of black men got backbone. That a whole lot of black men won't be running scared. A whole lot of black men will deal with you. See, a lot of people don't want to talk about that. Yes, a lot of black people are unorganized. Yeah, they are undisciplined, yes. But you have a few that are organized. And you do have a few that are disciplined. And, they, and, and you have many. Many understand unity. But a lot of people don't want to talk about that. Yeah, Brother Roger, church folk will kill church folk. They sure will. They walk right up in there and blow you away. And dog you out. I may get on the radar, yeah, by this video. I may get on the radar. Um, police may want to monitor me. They monitor me all they want. You don't make Brother Wright no different. Please monitor me. Because you're going to find out where I go. I go fishing and I go to the church house. Now, if you want to hang out with me at going fishing and going to the church house, you can monitor me all you want. But I, I will tell you this for me and my house. What you bring to the table, you're going to get it back. I'm not upset. 
I'm just keeping it 100. See, a lot of people don't want to talk like that. Afraid of uh, what people may think about you. I'm putting this video on right now to let church folks know you have the right to bear arms. You And I will tell everybody, every black man, go and get you a weapon. Yes, I said that. Get a registered weapon. Don't get no hot weapon. Don't get no weapon that the serial number been scrubbed off. No, don't do that. It been break-ins up here in Washington, left and right. One got blown away early this morning. He walked into the wrong house. And he got dealt with. Because he, cause if he break into your house, he not coming there to say hello. If he break into your house, he not coming to do a survey. He breaking into your house to do you some harm and do your family harm. He breaking into your house to take you out or to beat you down. And as for this injustice, this black man just, just, just pleading for his life. Yeah, them redneck bastards was wrong. Wearing a uniform. Yes, I said, if you don't like it, get off my page. Get off my page and stay off my page. Our brother Rice gonna sugarcoat nothing. When the facts are all across the world, when the facts are right up in our face, and some of these church leaders, some of these pastors ain't saying nothing. All these, some of these, some of these uh, 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 rights activists, you ain't saying nothing. I'm not the marching kind. No, no, I'm not the marching kind. Brother Rice ain't built like that. I'm not gonna march up and down those streets. I'm not going to march to the Capitol building. I'm not built like that. But if you do that, that is your voice. That is your mission. That I'm not here to spread no hate crime. I'm not here to talk about white people because it's on low down, dirty bastards, black people too. Just ignorant. They'll kill their own kind. The whole lot of black folks and killed the killed their own kind over nothing. But when I seen a man struggling and helpless, can't breathe, and you and you see a young man jogging through a a, a park and they gonna mow him down worse than a dog. Yeah, I'm a I, yeah I am pissed off. Can the preacher say pissed off? Yes, I will, and I said it. A whole lot of you need to get pissed off. But folks don't want to talk about that. Oh, you a preacher. You 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 shouldn't say stuff like that. I'm a preacher built different, okay? You do you, and by the grace of God, I do me. And like I said before, you don't like what I'm saying? Get off my page. But I tell you what, all black folks ain't going to be running scared. I'm telling you that right now. There are, some, there are some professional, organized black folks. And if you mess with them, you will get dealt with. Now, some of you want them, some of your church leader may want to leave Brother Rice alone. Yeah, that is fine. Get out the way. I'm upset and I'm angry. That like church folk can't get upset. Some of you need to get upset. Bible says you can be angry and sin not. Nah. But I tell you what, a whole lot of them racist rednecks done, done took the hood off and put on a suit and put on the officer uniform. Well, Brother Rice, why are you talking like that? Because I, I know what I'm talking about. I'm from Mississippi. I know what I'm talking about. At least in Mississippi, in certain parts of Mississippi, at least you see it, see the flag in the yard. Yeah, they, they fly the flag in the yard letting you know you better not come on this property. But folks don't want to talk about that. 
Mm -mm. They don't want to talk about that. They want to act like this world is all beautiful and lovely. And this is a hellish world. And if some of y'all church folks, if you don't wake up, you're going to get in the, in the meat grinder. But folks don't want to talk about that. Those who want to go to the prayer room, the Bible says prayer without cease. But Brother Rice, I've been to the prayer room. I done been to the prayer room. Person said, guy said, the white man got to be the devil. No. You got some black devils. You got some slanted-eyed devils. You got some round-eyed devils. You got some blind devils. Now, I don't want to blame everything like that on all, all white people. No, it, you got some hellish folks in every every culture catching hell. But folk don't want to talk about that. People want to use nice language and, and, and it's going to be all right. Brother Wright is, is going to tell the truth. And I am going to express how I feel because it is wrong. And it's a powder keg going on in this uh, United States. And when the black man, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm just going back to the black man right now. When the black man barely get full, he's going to be out of control. So that's what a preacher had to say today. Now, if they ban me from social media, hey, they just go ahead and write on and ban me. But you can't ban the facts. You cannot erase the facts. You can't erase innocent black men and black boys getting getting shot down and, and mothers and, and fathers going to the courthouse looking for justice. And you got Joker walking around free on paid leave. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. You say what you want to say about Brother Rice, but Brother Rice is being honest. See, a whole lot of folk don't want to speak the truth. They would see you want to just sit back in 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 your house and and you want to get on the phone and you want to text folks and 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 then you want to talk about it. Now, nah, brother Rice ain't gonna do that. Cause God done bless me too much. He done bless me too much, and I am free. See, a whole lot of folks ain't free. You can't speak what you want to speak. You can't say what you want to say. You can't tell what you want to tell. Because somebody got you hoodwinked. Nobody. Nobody have Brother Wright hoodwinked. Mm-mm. And you don't like what I have to say? Don't deal with me. You want to unfriend me? Don't want to socialize with me? Stay out the way. But I tell you what. Just like, just like the military. Looking for a few good men. And if you can read Braille, that's all I'm going to say. Looking for a few good men. You take care.